Mark Fulmer here with uh, another edition of uh, the Influencer Series. Uh, joined this time with by uh, Paul Moxness. Paul, thanks for Hi, joining Mark. us today. Paul's with the uh, the Always Care Consulting Company. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, hotel security and uh, issues and things kind of uh, in and around that. Uh, first things first, you've been in the industry for ever, ever, <laughs> yeah. and forever and a yeah. day. Thirty years. Okay. Yeah, 30 I started years. as a security guard in a hotel and. Uh, Ended up as VP Global Security for a big hotel company, nice. so all the way through. Yeah, yeah. nice, uh, nice progression. And so you've seen a lot of change. Absolutely. Through, through, the, yeah. uh, through the years. Yeah, absolutely. And probably the biggest change. Everybody talks about technology, but I think the biggest change for us was the focus moved from being a reactive response department right. to being more proactive and prevention, risk focused rather yeah. than response focused. Then I'm guessing that you interacted with uh, corporate travel departments, corporate security departments. Did, did that evolve over time as well? That changed also dramatically. When I started, I was told you would never have positive interaction with any guest. You would only be there when there was a problem. Uh, by the end of my career, almost everything I did interacting with the client side was corporate security and our big clients, and that was almost always positive. Yeah. yeah, and that's, I mean, really security bringing value to a guest stay, I guess. Is, was, was yeah, that the, the whole duty of care thing was yeah. growing, so we needed to work together with our clients to make sure we were meeting their needs and, yeah. and taking care of things the way they needed them taken care of. And maybe for those that don't know, go, get into a little bit about duty of care and kind of what, what are some of the corporate responsibilities, maybe not a whole, you know, laundry so list. So basically, I think, yeah, basically. you know, the, the, the simplest definition is that, to, that companies that uh, send people out traveling have a, a responsibility to provide a, a reasonable uh, amount of care to make yeah. sure that they're traveling and staying in safe places and, yeah. and that they're not being, being put at undue risk. And so the interaction between the hotel and client has to be much more close and proactive to yeah. build that, that relationship. Oh, yeah. good. And speaking of interaction, what's the, uh, the level of sharing like, you know, amongst different hotel groups, amongst different kind of professionals in the industry? Yeah, so back in 2007, uh, I was one of the founding members of the OSAC Hotel Security Working Group, okay. which comprises probably about 80-85% of the brand internationally branded yeah. hotels around the world. So all the big groups came together. Uh, OSAC facilitates it for us, but we work pretty independently of that, uh, sharing information, talking about uh, if we were moving into a new market, we would talk to the other guys, what's it yeah, like there, so how can we, yeah. can we work together. Because nobody is a, and the, and the thought process behind it was that uh, nobody wants to be safer than the other guy because if something happens at a destination, the destination dies. Right. The brand will survive right. because we're right. everywhere, uh, but the destination will suffer. So if it happens at your competitor hotel, your market is is going to disappear with the market that that disappears. So everyone working together to make destinations safe. Um, it is to everyone's benefit. So right. Yeah, that makes sense. It's non-competitive. And uh, as as a function, so security is a function within, I guess, the hotel world or that you know kind of uh, uh, scenario. Did you see it progress over the years as well? We saw a lot of progress. And one of the things we did with the hotel security working group was that from 2009 onwards, we went to a different place around the world. We gathered all the security managers from all the different brands and we held a joint training that, that all the groups contributed trainers and material and things so that we could give a high level of training to local security managers at a really low cost. And the first time we, we did it was in Mumbai. It was after the Mumbai attack. So we, we felt, what can we do to help our Indian colleagues? Um, and then about six years later, we were back in India. And every one of us commented on those six years, the difference in quality of security manager that attended the training was massive. Everybody was more switched on. Really Everyone was version. more, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. we've seen that a lot of different places around the world that the industry is really waking up and, and some of the people coming in are, are really switched on and talented, which right. is great for the future. Right. Interesting. And 
being part of an international chain, uh, one of the perks must be you get to visit all kinds of different places. It's a great way to, yeah. when I started, the company I worked for was owned by an airline and we could travel cheaply on the airline, which I thought was great. Yeah. But then when I progressed into a corporate role and people actually paid me to travel around yeah. the world and, and visit new destinations yeah. and see all these fantastic hotels, it was... Uh, yeah. It was a good gig. Jet, yeah. jet lag, not so much fun, but visiting... Jet lag like doesn't really people. matter when, when you know that, that you're given an opportunity that very few people get. Yeah. So, yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, maybe in closing, uh, you've traveled a lot. A couple, of key, a couple of tips, you know, maybe not you know, a, a whole list, but a couple of tips for a traveler, a business traveler going yeah. to a new place that they've never been to before. And I would say even when you get on the plane. When I get on an airplane, and, and my wife kind of gets upset with me sometimes, but... I always have my passport in my shirt pocket, my wallet in, in my pants pocket, my phone in my other pants pocket, so that if we have to evacuate and you can't take your stuff with you, I can survive. I got my money, my passport, and, and my phone, so, so I'll manage. Um, and then before I, I go anywhere, I always check out the destination. And when I'm flying somewhere, I always try to watch uh, a movie or something from that country that I'm flying to because it gives you a little bit of insight into what are, what are they actually talking about. Yeah. Uh, so knowing your destination in advance and, and it, today it's really easy to get good information. Yeah. Uh, that's really helpful. Yeah. So and, being, being ready and, and being informed. Yeah, really and, and making sure people have your itinerary, they know where yes. you are, what time zone you're in, yeah. so you don't get the middle of the night phone calls, <laughs> that's a good tip. Um, but also, if something should happen, you have them on speed yeah. dial and, and you can Good. call for help quickly. So yeah. You. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Paul, thanks very much for joining us. Appreciate Thank you, it. Mark. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. So, in closing, uh, if you're traveling, kind of be ready, be uh, be aware of where you're going and, uh, and have some insight. And uh, really interesting comments in and around uh, hotel security and, and how they contribute to an overall mission of that uh, uh, travel safety and just guest safety in general. Thanks again. Thank you.